Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Dom. This is Uplift Herbs. Happy spooky season! Happy season of the ancestors. Happy season of the witch. <laughs> I have not been making a whole lot of content. I've been enjoying my time off and frankly haven't felt very inspired to do much of anything. But now I'm back and I'm excited to sit and chat with you all. So for today, I want to just touch on some key differences between an ancestral altar and a day of the dead altar. They have very similar purposes and sometimes they're exactly the same and interchangeable, but sometimes they're not. And it's important to understand that distinction. I think it'll be easiest if we first start with the commonalities between them. They are both shrines, they are both altars, they are both intentional spaces set up as a portal or a conduit to contact and venerate ancestral spirits. So very, very similar right off the bat, which is one of the reasons there's so much confusion about it. The space is all about love and veneration and purity and all these other things that we associate with ancestral beings. It is a way to contact your ancestors. It is a way for them to be more involved in your life. It is a way to elevate them. And they can receive that love that you still have for them. And it maintains your relationship even after death. There are often similar offerings and things like flowers, candles, water, drinks, beverages. But the intention behind them tends to change when we begin talking about Day of the Dead. Now, traditionally, Day of the Dead doesn't look anything like what the fuck we're calling it now. And that's a byproduct of commercialization and yes, appropriation, but I don't know how malicious it is or how much of the actual ritual is being appropriated, how much of the genuine indigenous spirituality and religion behind it is being appropriated. To me, it seems like it's taking the aesthetic and I think the most innocent version of that is taking the idea of Day of the Dead and turning it into your family. I've advised people to celebrate Day of the Dead regardless of their connection to Mexico or being Mexican or anything like that. Because the truth is the holiday has expanded past that cultural background and you can celebrate Day of the Dead in any way that fits you. And that's just kind of the reality of living in a world that we do. We're also connected. And again, we live in a post-Coco world, so like, the word's out, everybody knows about the bird, and that's where we're at. Day of the Dead shrines encourage vibrant colors, flowers, and intentional food offerings, sometimes even toys, and other more material things. Whereas a traditional ancestor altar, depending on the tradition, might not involve things like food or beverages outside of clear water. And it's in this space we start to see the big differences. Day of the Dead is a once a year thing. So that shrine is unique for th those two, three days, however long you celebrate. And then it is taken down, it is removed, and it is repackaged, broken down, you take everything away and it's done. The holiday's over, you're done. Whereas an ancestral altar stays up year round, the ancestral altar tends to have more of the intention of veneration, of elevation, of lifting up your ancestors, of their progress and purification. Whereas Day of the Dead is very literally a party. And because Day of the Dead is a party, the offerings reflect that. It is appropriate to offer beer and alcohol and cigarettes and salty foods and sweet foods and confections and candies and games. Like, throw those spirits a fucking rager. Throw them a party. That's what Day of the Dead is. That's what Day of the Dead is about. It's happy birthday. I love you all so much. Here, come down and we will spend this time together sharing in these foods, sharing in these physical carnal pleasures. And then you go back to heaven. <laughs> Whereas for an ancestral altar, they tend to be less material, less physical, 
because the intention is almost inverted. Instead of, come on down, let's party and have a good time, eh? It's, I love you, go in peace, go to your elevation, may your spirit be raised. And again, the offerings will reflect that. So you will have candles, either like of a certain color for a certain intention. This is where we start to get into Mesa Blancas and like white altars and more traditional ancestral altars, which can have strict colors or strict design requirements, um, just to generalize a whole bunch of shit. Whereas Day of the Dead is much more free. It's much more free form. It is much more vibrant. Day of the Dead celebrates that little nugget of life that's left in all dead. Um, whereas ancestral altars tend to not really focus on that nugget, but to almost purify it to the point where it isn't material any longer. <clears throat> and again, context is fucking key here, guys. Your ancestral altar year-round Day of the Dead either is going to change based on you, your religious beliefs, your spiritual practices, your understanding of the world. It's going to change based on the cultural background you have. The stuff that you put on your ancestor altar is not the stuff I put on my ancestral altar. And I think that's an important distinction. This isn't a complicated holiday to start. If you are starting spirit work, if you are starting with ancestral veneration, Day of the Dead is not hard. It is not rocket science. It is not complicated. Set up your altar, say your prayers, and say thank you to your dead. Give them a little beer, shit. You want a shot at tequila? I know I would. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, when the Lord takes me, there better be a blunt on that altar for me. Just one for me. And I want you to put a little bit of mint flower in it. Flower. The flower from the mint. Not the mint leaf. The flower. And I want it rolled up good. And I want it rolled up tight. And also put me a little cup of tea. And I want roses. Or really pretty carnations. Now you know what to put on the altar for me. There you go. <laughs> all in all, your ancestors are your ancestors. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. My best advice to everybody who's starting spiritual work, who's starting to develop these spirit relationships and everything, is to start small and stay consistent. And that's the foundation that you need for anything moving forward. The rest of the pieces will fall into place, I promise. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Sit at your altar, have fun, be safe. Pray for your dead to rest in peace and pray for the dead at large to rest in peace. Pray for the elevation of all those spirits, known and unknown to you. Set up strong boundaries for this time of year. Um, wandering spirits are a thing, so if you don't wanna fuck with them, set up very clear and strong boundaries. With that being said, that is all I have to offer you. Burn cinnamon to cleanse your house. That was something they had me write into the script. So burn cinnamon to cleanse the space. Um, cinnamon, okay, I, yeah. Cinnamon has something, is something I've been using and especially an incense I use in the winter time more because it is tied with warmth and with love. And so I've been getting cinnamon candles and like they have two wicks. So one, the first one is let perpetual light shine upon my ancestors always. The second one, and let the smell of cinnamon remind them of the warmth and love that surround them always. So burn cinnamon sticks. You can light them on the stove, you can light them with the lighter or on a candle, just like incense and then wave them around. They go out a little bit quicker, but you will get a really, really good smell out of it. And it's a perfect cleanser for winter time. I don't know why that tangent was so significant, but again, they had me write it into the script. So the spirits need you to know, burn cinnamon, bitch. <laughs> I love you so much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thanks for spending a few minutes chit-chatting about ancestors and spirits and altars and all the other things. This was just an intro. I have other Day of the Dead videos if you're interested. 
And if I've left anything confusing or you have more questions, leave me a comment, send me an email, book a session. All the links are in the description. It is peace I offer you, and it is in peace I leave you. Have a wonderful day.